Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for Real Steel? Ready and action. Our first meeting, Steven said to me, look, Obviously in 2011, everything can be done digitally, so pretty much everything is done digitally. Uh, but he said on Jurassic Park, when we didn't have the luxury of such VFX, we built real animatronic dinosaurs and dinosaur parts, and maybe you should consider building real robots. So we built several robots for real. And the reality that that gives the visuals of the movie and the acting in the movie, particularly that boy, it was just a huge, huge asset. I think it's the single most defining decision we made to do a movie this complex with practical, real, remote-controlled robots. <laughs> if you don't believe the credibility of the robot boxing sport, you have no movie. You, you will always have, because even when people read about it on the internet or whatever, they're like, wow, robot boxing, what? And then they see the movie and they're like, oh, yeah, robot boxing, and it made me cry. So, like, the bottom line is, if we don't establish right out of the gate the legitimacy of the sport, we're dead. And so bringing in Ray to not only influence the choreography of the robot fights, but to work with Hugh and to kind of help Hugh understand, like, how does a fighter move? How does a fighter carry himself? Uh, all of that kind of the nitty-gritty that you can't really describe, you got to kind of hear firsthand, that was a huge asset. I, I knew that our movie was going to live or die on being emotionally engaging. Yes, there would be kind of great robot violence spectacle, but that the movie really is as much about its heart as about its action. And so if I want the audience to engage with the characters, I need the world to feel vaguely kind of relatable so that the characters are relatable. The other thing is my production designer, Tom Meyer, said, he goes, look, our cell phones are different than they were five years ago, our laptops are, but a diner is still a diner. And so I wanted a different kind of futurism and one that felt less kind of at arm's length and more kind of here, kind of within relatable distance. This is a good story for anyone who wants to write or direct because the truth is that it's all about the vision that you start with. In my first meeting with Spielberg, I said, Steven, the movie I want to be making here, the movie I'm going to make, I'm going to give you the spirit of it, and I'm going to write a new scene. And that new scene is going to happen halfway through round five, and Hugh Jackman is going to be shadow boxing on the edge of that ring, and we are going to see time and sound fade away, and all that will be left is this woman and this boy witnessing this other character return to grace. I pitched that scene, which did not exist two years ago. And so when I watch that scene in the movie now, and I see the way audiences are crying along with those characters, it is so profoundly gratifying because it's exactly how we drew it up. I knew on set, as soon as I put a camera on Dakota and I played music, I didn't use words to direct it. I told Evangeline and Dakota, listen to the music, go with it and they both got very emotional and I knew all of us on set were like, oh my God, this is one of those moments that you kind of hope will happen, but you can't, you can't demand, you can't bully your actors into it, but it happened and it gave me a scene that's exactly to what I pitched Steven two years ago. Can we? We'll see.